Hi, I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you. And what we're going to take a look at in this video is the Grandstream GWN 7710R, which is an outdoor switch. It's a, a, a light, it's a layer two light switch, which means it can do VLANs and all that, but it can't do, it can't do routing. It doesn't have layer three functionality. And it comes in kind of a beefy box. This is the box that it comes in. Thank you grand stream and why i'm really excited about this switch is it's kind of a uh and i've got some more industrial switches from teltonica and planet and a couple other places i'm going to do some videos on as soon as the rest of my dc power stuff shows up um it's the holidays amazon's taking forever you know how that is but this kind of blends like the best of of both worlds so we're going to take a look at the switch we'll take a look at the data sheet now there are other manufacturers that have uh switches like this i don't know of any that come in at you can pick this thing up for like 66 bucks and so in the box you get the switch which we're going to look at here this is the actual switch itself so you can see and it's it's uh i believe six ports and it's got this screw that secures it right here we're going to open this thing up on the back you can see there's this uh, mounting block it's got a grounding a grounding lug right here um, and it's got a few different ways that you can mount it so by default it comes with this bracket um, but it also has a DIN rail mounting option, and I have asked Grandstream if they can send one of those over to me. Like I said, right now you can pick this switch up for about 66 bucks. So we're going to take a look at this. We'll take a look at the rest of the stuff in the box, and then we'll plug it in. Now, what makes this different than some of the other switches uh, that you've seen here? And in the bottom of the box, there's some power-related paraphernalia, some mounting bolts, and some... Uh, big, big hose clamps. So that's everything that's in it. Like I said, this thing comes in around 66 bucks and um, it's very versatile, right? For 65 bucks. Now it's big, right? So I'm probably not going to shove a lot of these underneath desks like I do some of the other manufacturers switches, but I could definitely mount this on a wall. I could definitely mount this um probably under a desk I could definitely mount it um, outside I can mount this in the direct weather right on a wall I don't have to be afraid of it uh, being exposed to the elements and as soon as I can get this this lid off here I'll show you what's a little bit different about this switch so I took I took the screw out and I'm just gonna slide the front open like that now inside it's got our uh, default uh, password, our serial number, and our Mac. But if you look on the inside, you're going to see a few things that are different about this switch. So over here, we've got an SS SFP cage, and that'll do 2.5 gigabits. Then we've got all these Ethernet ports. And over here, we've got DC power. So we can power this with our DC power plant if we've got DC power, like if we're coming from... Uh, solar panels or if this is mounted in a din rail situation and we've got our dc power built out there we can wire right into this but we can also uh, go into port number five over here with uh 802.3 bt and then we can get poe plus um, plus or uh or 803 802.3 uh, bt out of those ports so this thing is pretty pretty versatile right so we can we can feed it with fiber from somewhere else um, and then we can power it with dc and then we can have our poe devices so cameras access points all kinds of things so real quick i'm going to go ahead and get this powered up and uh, this is actually the switch that i'm going to mount outside i'm replacing another another switch you can see I've got some some green lights some some things that's booting up so while that boots up 
we are going to take a look at the data sheet. So here it is, six port outdoor layer two light managed switch. Of course, it supports quality of service, all those things we've come to expect from a, from a grand stream switch. Now they just sent this to me. And so I'm plugging this in. Um, and we're going to go through this together. I haven't logged into this yet, so I'm kind of excited about that. But we've got five gigabit ports, four PoE out, one PoE in. Now, this will also do passive PoE. So not only will it do um, 802.3 AT or AF, it'll also do 20, uh, 24 volt or 48 volt passive out. And it'll do up to 60 watts on port one. So your PoE plus plus and 30 watts on ports two through four. It does have a PoE watchdog function so it can power cycle the port that we have our SFP uh, port. And then it is IP66 dust proof and waterproof. And it can go from negative 40 degrees Celsius, which I believe is negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 60 degrees Celsius, which is like a hundred and it's over 100 degrees. Hold on a second. I'll get you the exact number. That is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So this will operate in a very uh, wide range of environments uh, and temperatures. You can manage this locally. You can manage it with um, GW and Manager. Uh, you can manage it with uh, GDMS. You can manage it with a GCC or with a GWN router. It does support spanning tree and of course the, uh, the QoS. What really, uh, I, was, I was blown away at a $66 price point for this switch that can be DC powered, PoE powered, has an F, SF, SFP cage. Um, I was just, I, I, when they sent it over, I was just, I couldn't believe it. I was like, yeah, I definitely, we got to see this thing. So at that price point, I think this is going to quickly become one of our, one of our favorite switches. So I'll leave a link to this data sheet, um, down below. And is there anything else? Oh yeah. So in this data sheet, they do show you where your passive uh, cabling is at. So you've got your two pair, your four pair. So 24 volt versus 48 volt. And then down here, they give you a couple of deployment cases. So like what we were talking about earlier with the solar. So you're gonna power this thing with solar, you're gonna feed it with fiber, and then you're gonna power uh, a camera, you're gonna power a door station. Um, you could even power a phone, right? So anything that's PoE powered, some sort of weird IoT device, you could power it with this. And then here you can see they show this in a more of a, you know, being powered from inside on a, a switch, PoE++ over this, and then you're powering an outdoor AP and three cameras. So real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the IP address of this and we're going to log into it and take a quick look at the interface. All right, so here is our admin uh, login. I gotta see if I can type this password. So I actually am gonna have to take a picture of this password because believe it or not, I can't, I can't read this. So go ahead and make fun of me for that now. Uh, let's see here. And good for Grandstream for having randomized passwords on their devices. It is going to ask us to change it. Thankfully, I'm not going to have to try to read that again. So I'm going to go ahead and change the password here. All right, so uh, this interface should be pretty familiar to you if you've been in other Grandstream switches. We've got our... Um, port info here. You can see we've got that 2.5 gig for that SFP cage. We've got gigabit, 10100. If a port is error disabled because of 
uh, security, you're going to see that. And then it's going to show us uh, POEN. So you can see we got the little battery icon with the lightning bolt. So we are powering this switch with POEN. And then if we had other devices plugged in, you would see the little lightning bolt showing that we are supplying PoE to that. Excuse me. So now you can see that I am powering it with uh, 802.3AF-AT. And it would tell us down here how it is being powered. We can come in here. We can change our VLAN uh, 1, which is our default management VLAN. We can change the IP there. It's DHCP for now. Here is where we can change how we are managing this. So look at this. You can see it's got GDMS networking, L2 manager, L2 router, L3 manager, L3 router. So all of those different management options are right here. Under switching, you can see all of the ports are enabled. Jumbo frames goes all the way up to 15K is 9K by default. We can do lags with this switch. We got our nice MAC address search built in. Here's our spanning tree configuration. Here is all of our different VLAN settings. So we can add our uh, VLANs in here. And so now we can come in and we can add another VLAN. We can put a description in and we can change the membership of the um, of the ports with those VLANs. We do have some multicast configuration going on in here. We've got all of our quality of service set up. We can do uh, hard rate limiting on the ports. Storm control DHCP snooping, which is nice. Here is our PoE. So we can see more information about what we've got going on here with our PoE. Here's our more about our power supply, how much we are uh, putting out. Here's our PoE watchdog. We've got some under monitoring. We've got port statistics, port mirroring information, cable test, loopback detection, and then, of course, all of the maintenance so as soon as my, uh, like I said, I ordered some, some DC power supplies. I've got a power supply here, but I bought some more supplies so that I can have multiple switches hooked up and stuff, and we're going to have to mount them somewhere over here where you're going to be able to see them somewhere behind me. But I think for the price of this switch coming in at 66 USDs, I think this thing is... I, I think it's going to fly off the shelf. It's it's weather rated. You know, you can put it outside. You can see it's got the rubber grommets uh, in the bottom. You can mount it in a, you know, in an industrial environment. You can mount it outside. You can mount it in an office. It is so, it's so flexible for, <laughs> for $66. Uh, I hope you're as excited about this switch as I am. We will do a follow-up. I still have to do the why your Wi-Fi sucks videos, the weather is not cooperating, had some other things happen, holidays, things like that. But this is the switch that I'm going to use uh, for that outside when we start doing those videos. So I'm, I'm hoping here in the next couple of weeks we get some nice warm warmer days, something above 32 degrees where I can get out and feel comfortable doing the filming on those. This is a, the default, like I said, the default... Um, mount that comes with this so you can see it goes on the back like that you would screw it in and then it came with those other lags i did ask for the din rail mount because i i'm thinking like in this spot back here in the rack right here i was thinking about putting a din rail and mounting the switches and things like that so you can see them all and we can do some close-ups let me know what you think about that let me know if you're as excited about this switch as i am uh, that 24 volt, you know, and that was the other thing too. That uh, that I think there's a a hole in that market, right? There's some manufacturers that are doing, you know, passive PoE. Some manufacturers have 
moved away from that and more of their their mainstream models and i know grandstream has some point-to-point wireless stuff coming i know they've got some devices that are passive but there's all kinds of manufacturers that still have passive devices and you know to kind of keep that going keep that alive i think this is going to be a great option so let me know what you think about this switch let me know if you're already using this switch uh if you're not using it but you're going to let me know that down in the comments if you've got questions about this you want to see some particular things about this switch let me know so uh, we'll do some some further setup on this in another video and uh, get it deployed get it mounted outside of the din rail get it mounted on a, a interior garage wall um, i don't think in the garage it'll be dc powered so i'll have to power it from one of the other Grandstream switches that has uh, 802.3 BT or you know uh, PoE++ uh, so that we've got all of the power available that we need to power cameras and access points and all those good things. But let me know what you think about this. 66 bucks, I don't think you can go wrong. You can manage it locally, you can manage it in the cloud. Let me know what you think down below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share, follow me on Twitter and TikTok. Those links are down below, along with affiliate links, a Patreon link. And if you need IT consulting, head on over to willyhow.com. Fill out that contact form that's right there on the front page, and somebody will be in touch with you as soon as possible. If you want to talk to other folks about this switch, head on over to community.willyhow.com, sign up, and start asking your questions. Once again, I'm Willie. I want to thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.